I am Rotractor Mohammed Daum, the moderator of today's session. And today's session being mainly on whether education and experience, what gets you the better job. Just to give a bit of an idea, as you all know that the pandemic has really impacted multiple industries today. And education being something that has been heavily impacted because of COVID. And education has recently become much more expensive, um, especially due to uh, the rising dollar costs and even getting jobs in currently in the industry has become a bit more tighter. However, the entire pandemic has also given us an opportunity to upskill ourselves by joining programs which are online, uh, joining academic programs which are also given free online. So it gives us a lot of opportunity as well. So it brings us to a question now, which I think uh, many of us would be very excited to hear a couple of feedbacks from from our three speakers here today, and whether it gives us an, whether the academic qualifications, the additional uh, knowledge that we can acquire from these platforms gives us the advantage when trying to get a job, or whether the experience that we get nowadays through odd jobs that we can do, whether that would give us an advantage in succeeding life and join bigger companies in our roles. So today, on the topic of uh, education was explained what gets you a better job. We have three fantastic industry experts. We have Mr. Damida Patirana, General Manager from Halis Adventist Limited. We have Mr. Nisal Di Silva, the Director of Digital Strategy, Cinnamon Hotels and Resorts. And Mr. Hisham Samsudin, Manager of Events and Production, Cinnamon Hotels and Resorts. So I'll start off uh, by asking Mr. Damita a very interesting question. As a professional leader in your organization, what do you look in a candidate who's applying for an entry-level job? Is it experience or academic qualifications? Mr. Damita, over to you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks, uh, Aun, for the introduction. And uh, thanks to uh, the Rotary Club of Colombo North for inviting me. Um, so to answer your question on uh, an entry level job, uh, I think it would be unfair for us to uh, expect work related experience from uh, a candidate. I, I would want to specify work related experience because there can be various other experiences in life that you can easily share with, with the panel. Uh, but we will not be expecting work related experience from um, a, a candidate applying for uh, uh, entry-level job. Uh, but at the same time, if you look at in, uh, uh, part qualifications, maybe uh, when you look at qualifications, you can't expect uh, an entry-level candidate to have a full qualification. So maybe part qualifications, if it's into logistics, it can be a part qualification um, of uh, a logistics and a supply chain diploma. Um, or else it can be, if it's marketing, a part qualification in marketing, part qualification in business management. Um, so when it comes to uh, uh, what we look for in a candidate, more than experience and, and qualification, we would like to see uh, the culture fit. So how we assess that culture fit is through assessing the skills, attitudes, um, values the candidate brings. Uh, so how do you assess those skills, attitudes, and values would be uh, through experience-related questions. So if I ask you, uh, what kind of experience do you have in a leadership role? It doesn't have to be necessarily a leadership role in a work format. It can be as an interactor, how you have led um, uh, your club. Uh, it can be uh, as a prefect, how you um, uh, faced a challenge in a leadership role. Uh, it can be in your family. It can be a situational leadership um, experience that you have had. Uh, so what I see is most candidates find it difficult to uh, sometimes relate to a, a experience that they have had in life, uh, maybe in a club, maybe in sports, maybe as a perfect, maybe as, as a family member. Um, that's a big gap that I have seen. Uh, when you ask questions like leadership, uh, teamwork, certain skills that we would like to uh, see in a candidate. Uh, because when we recruit, uh, we would rather recruit a team player who is average more than a you know, smart individual who's, who's toxic, who can't work, work in a team. right? Uh, so that's where we look at that culture fit. For us, that's more important. 
um, uh, maybe experience and qualifications. We have our own setups to give them that experience. We have our own on-the-job training. We have an advantage campus, which gives them technical, technical expertise if required, qualifications. We have separate qualifications in line. So those are not hard to find. Uh, but that culture fit is something that we um, specifically look at. And uh, if as a candidate, if you can relate to what you guys are doing right now, road tractors, um, there is enough and more young people out there who's not taking advantage of this opportunity that you guys have. Um, it's available to every young person in, in Sri Lanka, but very few take advantage out of it. Same applies to uh, your school life, right? Uh, there, there's, there's a lot of opportunities that you have, platforms where you can display these skills. Sometimes we don't take advantage of. Um, so we as uh, young individuals, we need to be more aware of those opportunities and take advantage of those. And one last thing that I see is the lack of uh, basic awareness. I'm uh, giving this example from recent interviews that we had uh, for management trainee uh, uh, interviews for Haley's. So uh, Haley's Advantage is the transportation and logistics arm of Haley's, um, which is only one sector. There are a few other sectors uh, in Haley's. So um, when you ask candidates, what do you think about the logistics industry in Sri Lanka? Uh, what do you know about Haley's? What do you know about Haley's Advantage? The answers are very surprising, right? Uh, some some come out and say, I don't have much uh, uh, knowledge about logistics. I don't know about supply chain. Uh, you don't have to have technical expertise about logistics, right? You go, go on Google. If you type logistics, you can, you know, uh, read enough and more material about logistics supply chain related to Sri Lanka, right? If you go to a company website, you can easily uh, identify the sectors, the clusters that we are in and relate to something, right? From a management trainee, we expect that basic awareness, right? And um, as a young individual applying for a management trainee program or any other entry-level program, you should see yourself in that industry. How can I uh, create an impact in this industry? What problem am I going to solve by joining this company? So that kind of basic awareness, you don't need any qualification. You, you just need that basic awareness, uh, do your own best research and come prepare. So these are few things uh, uh, to answer your question from an entry level um, job that we would we would look for. So Ms. David, so I, one interesting thing that I think that you pointed out was, I think the process of interviews, I think, I think me myself have gone to multiple interviews myself. It's it's a very uh, tough situation for very very many youngsters who are just entering the industry because one part of university and one part of the other added qualification that we do, the process of going through interviews is not something that we have been spoken much about. Nor have we been informed of how to address it. And as you perfectly said, I think the question on leadership and what leadership role is something that I think uh, most of us uh, now. I've significantly learned to answer that question by seeing a lot of YouTube videos. So I'm 100% sure many youngsters, a lot of youth people who are even within our club, the first thing that you do is go to YouTube and, you know, type how to face an interview, see the top 10 questions and, you know, um, yeah. learn those uh, answers to those questions. So thank you, Mr. Damit. So I would like to ask a question to Mr. Nisar. I think Mr. Nisar, since you're especially in the, IT of things, you're in international of, internet of things industry and digital marketing. What are your thoughts about a person applying for entry-level job, especially in the uh, especially in the social media landscape of things? Because that's one of the biggest booming industries in the country. And a lot of youngsters who are taking digital strategy, social media marketing as part of their career. So what, what are your thoughts, Mr. Nisal, on this? Um, I think I'll agree with uh, one major thing that I mentioned about the culture fit. So especially if you come in, because I, before cinema, I was in um, agencies for like, you know, six to seven years. So something even at agencies, even at cinema, um, uh, something we look at is like, you know, how much 
the culture which is relevant to that person who's coming in because when we someone coming for the entry level job they are coming from various kind of backgrounds so one thing is we really like can someone really adapt into the existing teams um can they be like you know part of a team player that you know just to add value to the team that is already in place so that i think would be the biggest thing that we look at especially in an entry level um, job because while is the entry level job it's critical for that person success as well as is critical for the existing team to use someone to groom and also to like add value to that person also so that would be the um, key thing we look at uh, but apart from that um, one thing we've seen especially in the digital sector is that um, there are a lot of uh, people who's actually um, because couple of years coming from um, you know various kind of education programs um, because if you look at the industry in sri lanka uh, last 5 to 6 years there has been so many digital and social media courses and the, uh, the trainings has been in place so what happened is that there are so many people who's coming by doing um, either certificate level so um, the um, the diploma levels but uh, one they don't have the self learning aspect so most of the people feel like you know digital is like could be like any other subject that you understand the basic theory of things and then come and um, you know they have this mindset that they Hi, Mr. Nissal. I we we lost you a bit over there. Sorry, Nissal. Just seems he seems to be having a power cut. He said he's going to be rejoining. I think it's a regular right. regular occurrence these days. <laughs> I was I, I was like very lucky enough that we had enough diesel at our office to you know start, <laughs> stay back uh, for this meeting and this moderation session. Oh, he's back. He's back. <laughs> Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, Nisal. So I just said a quick power cut. Just wow, just kick back. Um, so yeah, just I was just telling is one thing is like um, something we looking from young is like someone who can have that self learning capability and someone who feel like you know there's much more to learn, especially in a, um, in an industry like digital because everything is like keep changing. Uh, so rather than someone being stuck to um, the the you know structured way of education. if someone is coming of like you know he can get things done attitude or if some if he feel like someone is a self learner who can actually adapt into digital that would be the second key thing we look at especially on the interview point of view um uh, with the uh, culture fit so i think that's the second more important thing that um i've seen especially on the agent background as well as on the corporate background both thank you nisal so just to ask another interesting question from hisham especially hisham you are in the industry which is tourism which is one of the heaviest hit industry right now in the country uh, especially when it comes to events and management uh, it's 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 a bit of a challenging uh, uh, process now especially in sri lanka and uh, in my opinion uh, in my personal opinion i feel that a lot of youngsters who are somewhat uh, knowledgeable on the area of learning to handle events and all of that but what are the roles that you look into especially for people applying to the tourism industry especially to a company like cinnamon and especially to the role that you are currently looking in at at cinnamon and so firstly thank you for having me on board really appreciate you guys inviting um on the front of cinnamon so my team looks into events which uh, service all of cinnamon hotels and resorts um including the the smaller hotel level events all the way through the mega events that cinema has done over the years whether it be mama mia sound of music club music festival etc so you can range from a 5000 uh, pack event all the way down to a very intimate 20 uh, 20 pack uh, 20 pack event so that kind of poses the question of someone who has to be absolutely agile fresh in thinking and creative um that's absolutely key um i was hoping that someone in the panel would be at least opposed to the similar way of thinking i think we are all walking down a way of experience as, as opposed to as opposed to the way of uh, paper based qualifications so especially in the space of events uh, yes things do change extremely rapidly the thing you do today is not the thing you do tomorrow um and more than anything else events is a hands on thing uh, you are running about um the amount of hands on experience you have takes you a long long way um i one of my strongest 
Uh, I feel the strongest years that I had in my life as well, as well as anyone who that I who I hire is the year of an internship. I think an internship year after college or after school is absolutely crucial. Uh, it helps you for one find yourself, but also fine tunes fine tunes whatever skills that you have mastered over your latter years in school, in college, or whatever it is, and really kind of find the perfect fit for you. And if by chance, like it was for me, happened to be an organization, being an intern, uh, doing what I absolutely love, um, things just fall in place. Um, so that is definitely something that goes a very very long way. Uh, so also to answer the question of what you said, a lot of a lot of individuals out there in the event space, yes, absolutely. And with COVID being one of the biggest hard hits uh, for us the past two years, completely agree on that as well. And if anything, that that actually came as a perfect juxtaposition to uh, figure out if a person is agile enough to be able to take on new uh, new roles, um, new activities. So, for the example, something something that happened on our front was um, my team went on from handling six to seven mega events and bring in over 300 million rupees in revenue a year through to just a complete stop of no events whatsoever. Um, so what do you do with this, with this staff card of these guys who are skilled in the space of events, who've been doing it for years, who love doing it? Uh, what do you do with them? Um, that actually came into play with us and we uh, slowly but surely diverted ourselves towards the space of production. Uh, primarily in photography and videography, because obviously that has a lot of logistics to play with, a lot of uh, moving parts, a lot of cogs to ensure that a, a perfect gear falls in place. Um, so we kind of were able to divert our team to be able to take on roles in the space of uh, production. So yeah, that once again, if you are someone who has primarily studied events, got an event job, and is so hell-bent on the fact that you want to do events all your life, well, that would have come as a complete full stop to you. But the fact that you have experience, you're agile, you're able to move, rotate, your attitude, like what Damita mentioned, is absolutely key and was able to kind of help us figure out a new way in which we can stay relevant and bring absolutely massive impacts to the organization. So just to add a bit, uh, Hisham, so for a particular candidate who in particular is applying to an event-based um, organization, so obviously all the... NGO work that we do, volunteering work that we do brings that advantage. But do you actually look for paper qualifications uh, in relation to event management uh, as like one aspect of, you know, recruitment? Um, personally, not so much. I mean, having um, having some kind of some kind of um, bachelors, whether it's whether it's general marketing, uh, whether it's project management, obviously we take you a long way because event management in end of the day is project management. It's just a huge bunch of cogs and you have to put it in place and show it runs smoothly, right? Um, so having some kind of knowledge in event management and project, ma sorry, project management much rather takes you a long, long way. Uh, but like you mentioned, uh, what I personally look for is what events you have done past. Like, and also like Damita mentioned, doesn't necessarily have to be uh, an ex a job related experience, but whether it's school, whether it's college, whether it's extracurricular, um, what is your experience in that field? Because uh, the biggest thing in events is stress management is can you take the stress when everything kind of hits the top of the hill? And uh, that can only be treated with experience, no matter how much knowledge uh, you gain through education, stress can only be managed through experience. And with, especially with event management, that's something that I find is quite key. Great, Mr. So I would like to ask, ask a question from Mr. Damita, especially in a general manager role, a lot of people who be applying for associate level jobs in your company. So uh, when people usually apply for associate level jobs, uh, what do you refer to in his CV? Do you look at his academic grades after a particular level, if he has past experience? Uh, I will uh, just to add to, uh, I think uh, Hisham also pointed this out on qualifications and uh, paper qualifications, grades. Yeah. Um, I, I can't uh, uh, basically uh, uh, speak against qualifications because I'm an educator myself. Uh, yeah. Nisan is also, I think, in the same panel with me uh, at, at SLIM. So uh, um, I think all three of us agree on one thing, um, which is uh, that there's a difference between education and qualifications. Um, education doesn't mean qualifications and qualifications doesn't mean education purely, right? Um, edu qualification is a paper qualification, as you correctly said, the grades on your certificate. That's, that's important. 
Um, but education is a process. Education is a process of acquiring knowledge. It's a process of acquiring skills, and uh, and it's a discipline altogether. Right? You you don't need to uh, do a formal qualification in order to go through this process of education. What enriches the person is more than the knowledge. It's that process which enriches you. Right? Why I'm saying this is as an educator, this is a challenge that. We face. We have professional assignment writers to do, right? Uh, so if if you look at a uh, uh, international qualification like CIM, which I lecture, uh, when there is an assignment, assignment writers approach the students saying, "Look, I do the assignment for you, and right? you don't. You just have to pay. Uh, I'll do the assignment. I'll take care of the whole thing, right? So if you if you acquire a qualification through Um, means like that, going through an assignment writer, getting the help of an assignment writer, you will definitely fail in your workplace. So, what is more important, more than the qualification, it's that education that matters, right? The process that you follow. If you don't follow that process, process and obtain qualification, you are going to fail in the day, because when when it comes to actual performance in a job role. You will struggle because you don't know the concepts, you don't know the theory, you don't know how to apply. Right. So, um, uh, so this is something I wanted to differentiate between between qualifications and education. Um, so, um, in in qualifications, as you said, um, uh, whether we look for grades more than grades, what we are keen on is how uh, the modules that they have learned. Can be applied, and how they have applied in real life situations. Now, Hisham brought in a very uh, uh, interesting point on uh, on innovation, right? So, if as a student in your MBA, if you have if you have done entrepreneurship and innovation as a mod- module, how have you applied innovation and entrepreneurship in a workplace, right? During COVID, uh, even in our industry. Uh, we represent the travels arm of Hades, right? Uh, large, large airlines like Qantas and British Airlines have been represented by us. So, uh, for us, uh, it was it came to a standstill overnight, uh, with the airline business being affected. But then our our businesses revived. Uh, we started operating charter flights. We did freighters on passenger airlines. So that's that's the kind of innovation that we that we accept uh, expect our people. Uh, our associate level job, uh, uh, the the vacancies that we have filled, or even entry level um, um, uh, candidates that who have joined our company, should display that agility. Right. So as long as you can apply what you have learned in in your qualification, and for you to do that, remember you need to go through that process of education because it brings in a lot of discipline. It brings in a structure. Um, there are deadlines for you to uh, uh, submit your assignments, so you have to be extremely disciplined. You know how difficult it is, uh, but if that's only if you go through that difficult part and and achieve it. So then, of course, in in workplace, it's going to be peanuts. It's easy for you to perform uh, because you can easily relate what you learned in in your qualifications in real life. I think that's the most uh, most important thing that we look for. More than the grade, it's how they have applied in in uh, the the knowledge that they have acquired in uh, real life situations. That's more important. Great, Mr. Damita. So uh, on that, I would like to ask a question for Mr. Nisal. I think uh, one of the industries I think uh, truly uh, that I have seen a lot of Google ads on is on social media marketing and taking that as a career in the way forward uh, for a lot of youngsters, right? Because if that Social media marketing is now, as a terminology, has become a very fancy term for a lot of people, and has given a lot of excitement to a lot of youngsters and youth to be a part of in the industry. And some parts of the industry, especially social media marketing, uh, there are a lot of courses that you can do now online, which are free, right? So Nisa, what do you think about this? The free courses that you can do for digital marketing. So if people do those free courses, get those certificates from those free courses. Is it an advantage that you feel that they have when they apply for jobs? 
Um, I think indeed, yes. Um, also, like what Damit said, I'll start from there. So the formal education actually give you the discipline and also like, you know, following a certain timeline and deadline. So you're used to that. So the free courses in most of the cases are like, doesn't have a certain timeline or deadline. So you don't get that kind of skills and the discipline from that. That's a downside of it. But the plus side is like, especially on the digital is that since everything is changing, you following a um, course like let's say google digital garage or google skill center or even something like facebook blueprint what you get is like up to date knowledge you are getting from the source itself so from my personal experience i would always um, uh, would have a positive feeling about if they have done a similar kind of pathway with with a, a partner like google or facebook because i know that while you can learn um, the core and basic theory from a structured um, certificate or diploma program when it comes to digital, whatever the updated knowledge that you are getting um, can only be obtained by following certain courses like what I mentioned on like uh, digital garage and etc. Um, I'm not saying that the all the digital courses that you would see on the internet would add the same value, but there are certain pathways that you can definitely take and to keep stay updated as well as to get the latest knowledge that coming from those partners. So yeah, from um, industry point of view, I would say when specifically on digital, uh, the online courses such as that would can add a huge value for the person when they're starting a career. Thank you, Nisa. So uh, this I think is a question for the entire panel. I think um, especially nowadays compared to ever before, the job pool has become comparatively smaller. Uh, please forgive me, there is no current now at my place. <laughs> uh, thank God for night vision in our cameras, yeah. So uh, coming back to the question, with the job pool now being much more challenging than ever before, right? And a lot of youngsters, youth, coming out of universities with academic qualifications, not being able to get jobs. So what are options do you think that youngsters have in terms of getting that work experience that they want? Because I think the panel was very clear that experience takes you a long way, but it's always that first job, that first chance a person gives you to actually um, gain that knowledge of, you know, getting hands on and getting that on the job training. So especially with current, current times, with the context of, less jobs being in the pool. Uh, what are your thoughts? What, what, what do you think that, you know, youngsters can do to get that advantage in, you know, applying for places and getting jobs? We'll start off with Hisham on this. So why don't we just go with Damita first and then we'll just go back to Hisham. Okay, um, so uh, this contraction in the labor market, I think even in Sri Lanka, when you compare from 2019 to 2020, uh, quarter four, I think uh, there had been about a 2% contraction in the labor market it's itself. Uh, about 150,000 jobs have been cut. Um, and at the same time, uh, so that, that's what happens in the labor market from the employers in. But at the same time, from the, from the employee as well, uh, you might have heard about uh, the great resignation, which which happened. So the the employees are also leaving jobs uh, because uh, we have all come to this realization that a nine to five job is not uh, not going to be the you know uh, the way of life in the future. Uh, you need to spend more time with your family. Uh, it's that flexibility that matters. So people are leaving jobs. They they have started doing uh, things that they love. Um, and they they have started following their passion. So there are two two things that are happening. One is from uh, from the employer's side there is a contraction. And if you talk about the current situation in Sri Lanka, I think more than the pandemic now we are facing an economic crisis and political instability. With all that, um, there's a contraction that happens because all the uh, expansion plans that most corporates have. Um, uh, have been delayed uh, uh, till June, July, August, uh, until there is some sort of stability. Uh, so that's something that's, that's happening. But at the same time, um, there are many other opportunities that have been opening up, uh, especially through the gig economy. We as employers, we have realized that uh, we don't have to restrict ourselves to Sri Lanka. When finding talent, we can go beyond Sri Lanka and you know, find talent overseas. 
uh, especially we have concepts like free zone where selling happens in markets like us and uh, in uh, in us and and uh, in the in the european union um where it will be difficult for people from sri lanka to sell the concept but it's easy for us to identify um employees from from europe and us uh, closer to the market to sell uh, sell a free zone um so there are many such opportunities that are opening up um not in terms of 9 to 5 uh, full full time employment uh, but then through the gig economy there are various other uh, opportunities that are coming up and also something that um, the, the youth need to keep in mind is today it's not about a career path a single career path but we are talking about a career portfolio right so while you do your 9 to 5 job you you might have a passion of um, uh, hiking so you become an influencer you take groups on hikes during weekends you make you try to monetize your passions as well so as you correctly said doesn't have to be a single career path but trying to create that portfolio uh, where your dependency on one job is less and you you follow your passions as well so i think with uh, nisal will be uh, nisal and hisham might be uh, better to answer this question because there's a large demand in sri lanka i think for it professionals but i don't know how uh, uh, how suitable the current context is with with continuous power cuts uh, pro- problems in infrastructure it might be difficult to work from home and for it professionals to uh, uh, be be employed um but those opportunities are definitely uh, opening up and um, if you are open to such opportunities i think it's a matter of taking advantage of such opportunities thank you dimita anything nisal that you would like to also add uh, to it um i think exactly the damito uh, son point about gig economy so um he jump can add on to this also so something even we look at from um cinema point of view that you know rather than we um, being strictly limited to the workforce that we have on full time um how do we work with like a large talent pool especially if you look at um, the content creators point of view um there's quite a bit of um, you know younger crowd uh, who we can actually use to create social content dig- digital content videos and there are a lot of influencers in the market that you know they have their own alternative ways of earning and in most of the cases they actually earn a lot more than um, what a usual 95 would make um so i think the way you look at the job market and how you approach has to be a little bit different than the traditional way of you know like you know going to a university um getting a stable job and being on that industry until you retire i think that mindset has to be changed um from early point of view because the ways of earning as well as being established in the job market is quite diversified and changed than what it used to be like you know i would say 5 to 6 years ago um that's one thing and also on the um second thing is about when it comes to digital specifically and how i would see is that how someone can come into the job market is that how much of additional interest and knowledge that you can um, obtain and you can be highlighted more better than another um, candidate the reason why is that like you said uh, the knowledge which is available freely on the internet and on any other digital um, channel is quite vast so if someone is really keen on like you know learning and and when it, when they apply for internship or a, or for a social media position or any other digital position they would have lot more places to learn so obviously everyone has the opportunity of you know going a little bit of extra mile and come into a interview and actually uh, you know try to prove themselves so something i've seen in most of the interviews is that um, most of the candidates talks about their education background what they have achieved how their grades are but nothing beyond that but if there's someone who even has a lesser grade but has more enthusiasm about the subject and they have done their self studies um i would usually take them over the uh, you know more um, more better grade person because we can see that person could be a valuable asset for the company especially on medium like digital so i think that is also another key thing that specifically on digital point of view that someone can get a better uh, mileage in interviews and getting the first job great is also i think orani sali was saying that if a person has is like taking that first effort of at least going to a small business and saying okay i'll be your social media manager and taking that as a being a client there uh, and taking them as a client and you know doing 6 months of work there and learning the tricks of the trade and having physical results and showing it to bigger companies at the recruitment stage i think in a way will give you a better an opportunity of the job no nisal i think 
Yeah, that's definitely one. And the second thing is like, even without working for a brand, you're doing your personal branding on social media and try to figure out right. how you can have that extra mileage for yourself. It also shows that, you know, you are taking and step to understand how the industry and the platform and everything works. Thank you, Nisa. So I think, Hisham, uh, w- the main thing that we're talking about is how the job pool now is a bit of a challenging situation for a lot of youngsters and youth to enter than ever before. So especially, Hisham, when it comes to events as an industry, what are your thoughts, Hisham? Uh, so what, what do you think about the job pool and people so- entering? So obviously right now in the space of events, um, I think it's the opposite to perhaps what IT is going through. Um, you have a shortage of jobs for guys who are absolutely passionate and are pretty well qualified, well skilled, well experienced in the event space. Um, simply because the number of events, events that take place is so much more limited. Um, but to add to the to add to kind of the point that Nisal uh, kind of picked up on was, um, I strongly believe that if you do what you are truly passionate about for work, you won't have worked a single day in your life because you absolutely love what you're doing. Um, and that's something that's almost, almost like a mantra that I live, that I live by. And uh, to everyone that kind of comes by uh, either an internship or comes for an interview, I always say, just do what you're absolutely passionate about. If you, if you, if you feel, if you have even a 1% feel that, okay, this may not be my thing. Um, you're doing yourself a major disservice of actually rather taking one step forward by, ta- by, by going for that interview. You're actually taking two steps back. Because you may be entering a space that you will be absolutely uncomfortable with, absolutely uh, unhappy, and it can it can have detrimental effects to your to your entire career. Um, so yeah, um, the other thing is a lot of a lot of the younger guys are really um, I would say almost in a rush to get their job now at the age of seventeen at the age of, uh, age of eighteen. It's fantastic, but also sometimes it makes sense to uh, to pace it down to slow it down. Have the deal of experience, try multiple things, do a six month internship, do another two month internship. If you didn't enjoy that, do another two month internship elsewhere um, so that you could actually figure out what you truly love. Um, And that I believe goes a very, very long way. Uh, I mean, not just kind of establishing yourself in your career, but also it provides you with a clear path and a good idea on where you want to move forward in your career. Great, Isham. I think there's a famous saying, it's that in the first few years of your job experience, it's not about the pay, it's about the people that you work with and the bosses that you have. It's a knowledge that you gain from there that can actually take you in the way forward to better places and better areas. So I think uh, overall, uh, since I think the panel, many of you have started speaking about experience. Obviously, we all know that uh, depending on your job, obviously, academics and experience uh, matters. If you are a medical student, obviously, we will need a bit more of academics, uh, more heavily with you uh, compared to, you know, practical knowledge. But as you correctly said, with multiple industries now booming and a lot of opportunity for a lot of people to do many things. And especially with a lot of youngsters now having the entire side hustle culture that's coming in. Uh, what do you all think about general on, on what do you what are your closing remarks in terms of experience and academics? Uh, especially since all of you all are well-established uh, academic professionals yourselves, um, and now you all at very good points in your career. Where else do you think you guys can go as well? And you know, tell these youngsters who are joining us in today's session, or where they can also go in the way forward. Because obviously, our country right now is having a bit of a very tough situation. The cost of education is really high, especially with the pounds going up. So people are looking for all, alter- uh, you know alternative options for them to get qualifications as well because the dollar going up is a very costly affair so what are your thoughts i think as closing remarks hisham damita and nisal over to you uh, damita uh, yeah on a uh, few few things that i couldn't share was uh, on democ- democratization of knowledge uh, most of the speakers spoke about it uh, in their respective fields, especially uh, in IT events, uh, there are various uh, open forums that are available for you to acquire knowledge. So remember again, uh, the difference between qualifications and, and education. If you are really keen on getting yourself educated on something, there are ample ways of um, uh, you know acquiring that knowledge. Uh, so I myself, um, I'm a frequent visitor of edX, um, EDX, So when you go to edX, there are free courses offered by Harvard, uh, offered by MIT, 
uh, those are free courses and if you want to uh, 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 obtain a certificate then of course you have to pay about 200 dollars and obtain uh, a certificate right now i'm enrolled in two uh, such programs on edx uh, completely free of charge but if i need that certificate i need to pay about 200 dollars so uh, for you if you if you um, if somebody brings brings uh, the the cost of education as an excuse the answer is it is not an excuse it might be an excuse for a paper qualification but for you to be um, uh, acquiring knowledge for you to uh, be educated this is not at all an excuse there are enough and more opportunities out there uh if you if you go and enroll um um subscribe to the harvard business review it's 12 dollars per month right so even if you take the exchange rate as 400 rupees uh we are talking about 5000 bucks a month uh so uh, harvard business uh, review will give you a lot of case studies a lot of articles on leadership on marketing business management all that so um so for different budgets you have different solutions so don't ever think that it's going to be expensive um we can't get educated in this country because of the ex- exchange rate there are enough and more opportunities out there so that's that's one part of it and then um uh, the last bit of advice i would say is to think big sometimes this is a puzzle as most of the speakers said when you uh, look for that 9 to 5 job uh you know there are different quadrants in this space one is uh you do something that you love and you earn money right which is an ideal position for you to be in but sometimes you are not lucky to be in that situation sometimes you will have to you know uh work through a 9 to 5 job which you might not be that passionate on but then you will build that portfolio as i said before uh work on that portfolio where you have another income source where you are passionate about right so so build that portfolio now itself based on based on the passion that you have and whatever you do it might seem like a puzzle right now when you are doing it it might look like a puzzle uh it, because you only see a piece of that puzzle but when you turn back maybe after 10 years when you turn back you will see these pieces of the puzzle coming together right um so from my career i've worked in different industries i've worked for dell uh, a, a one known company a family business and then i moved to dankoto porcelain i started my career at helis i left the group because i i wanted retail exposure uh so i got that from odell i i moved into dankoto which is again a retail brand a manufacturing company uh then again i moved back to helis advantages so when i did those little bits of you know at odell and at dankoto porcelain it was not very clear for me but now when i when i look back i can see how it has really created that trend and i can see that puzzle coming together and every experience is important if you think that the current experience is bad it will come in handy at one point in life if you think that you are dealing with a difficult boss this is something that i hear more often from my students when they call and say look i've, I've had enough right one year with this guy very toxic that's an experience believe me it's an experience right you don't have to bear with that toxicity every day right you you can come out and you can uh, move into a different company but consider that as an experience right we are talking about maybe 30 40 years of a career right so don't think that you're wasting one year with this guy treat that as an experience because i have worked under toxic people i i have dealt i'm sure most of us have right uh, so all those are experiences i will quote one last ex, 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 uh, uh, an example from my career um when i joined advantis for the second time uh, there was uh, an opportunity that i got to work with a group managing director mr guan mai deratna um on a voluntary organization so he was heading um, an industry organization called ceylon association of shipping agents it's an industry body and he was the chairman of it um i was supposed to assist him uh but it was a voluntary role you don't have to put a lot of effort into it but as we started we developed a marketing plan a business plan more than a marketing plan it was a business plan and then based on that business plan we came up with 
uh, a public image uh, plan as well. Um, so that proactiveness was really appreciated by the industry as well as my managing director. And I, I feel that I ended up in my current role as a result of um, certain things that I did in that voluntary capacity. So sometimes when you do that voluntary role, you might think, okay, look, this is, this is just a waste of time. But then if you do it with the best of your ability, someone will identify your uh, your your scope, your potential, and give you that opportunity. So I think um, giving giving your best in whatever you do, it can be in a voluntary capacity, it can be uh, in in your workplace, it can be advising, mentoring another person. If you do it best of uh, best of your ability, then um, you're showing your true potential, and one day those little pieces of the puzzle will fall into place. Damit, I think you summed it up really well uh, in terms of what you really feel is very critical for youngsters and youth for us to you know actually understand and absorb. So, Hisham, what are your closing notes? What, what, what are your thoughts overall, Hisham? Yeah, I think Damit actually summed it up really well. Um, to add to something that I think we haven't spoken on too much is, for one, uh, I am an, I'm a patriot. And a brain drain is a major issue we have in Sri Lanka, which um, especially right now, everyone's looking to leave. Um, I truly think there is hope. And if anything, I would say the silver lining is if people are leaving, then there's going to be shortage. There's going to be a better opportunities available. So obviously take advantage of that. That's something that you should really look at. Um, and also in the, in the process, obviously, you're helping to enrich the nation once again to get, get back on its feet. Uh, that's absolutely important. Uh, another thing which I have kind of always believed in was um, you would need your CV only for your first or your second job. Uh, there onwards, everything else should run on references because a job well done is, I believe, far, far more effective, efficient. A relationship well built is far more efficient uh, than a line on your CV saying you have got this and got that, which don't get me wrong. It's fantastic to, to, to get these paper-based qualifications. Uh, but a reference is far, far stronger in my personal opinion. Um, so yeah, that would be my closing remarks. So what about you, Nisa? What, 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 are, what are your thoughts in the entire dynamic of things? Uh, I think Damita covers the overall aspect of it, which I like most of the things that I want to mention also. But just to add what Hisham said, um, you know, the, the reference and also something I believe is the network is the key thing that when you progress um, in a career, because why I'm saying that um, other than my first job, every other job I got, I either go through, uh, let's say like, a, for example, LinkedIn or through the friends or the colleague that I worked in previous organization, especially my last three companies. Um, I've actually got, you know, uh, either been asked to join or got referred by someone I worked in the past. Um, so something I believe is that, you know, uh, like Hisham said, if you do your work in one of the careers the best possible way, and obviously you're going to get a better opportunity for the next time. Because the people who work with you in your network, if you are doing a good job, they'll definitely go into uni, would want to work with you in the future also. So in the in the first job, obviously, you know, you, you can just try to figure out a way to like get into by doing internship. Um, or, you know, like going a little bit of extra uh, step like we spoke about. But even at the internship, um, I mean, Hisham would agree that, you know, we had like some amazing interns, which turned out to be like a really good career provision throughout the um, the company, which happens like in most of the cases. So what I believe is like once you get that first step, if you do your job, the best uh, capacity that you have, there's a huge chance that throughout your career, your progression would happen through a network and the referrals. Thank you, Nisal. I think um, I think one I think one element that you I think all of you all emphasized on was the aspect of networking. I think many of us road tractors, I think that's a great opportunity for us because we meet a lot of people from multiple companies who are in multiple universities who are entering the working force, giving us that advantage of knowing people in the industry. So with that being said, thank you, Hisham. Thank you, Damita and Nisa for joining today for this uh, panel discussion. And be, I believe a lot of people who joined us today and who would be seeing this online on Friday would truly um, get, learn a lot of things uh, in terms of education and experience. I think all in all, summing it up, I think all of you all spoke some very clear, valid points. I think, Hisham, I think the closing point that you said of the mental drain, 
with things happening in our country right now a lot of people are looking for opportunity outside but as you correctly said when there is opportunity people flying abroad there is opportunity that grows within the country as well and our country can't fail i truly believe our country can't fail so if we are there if we are the, the, the as the background and that's in the backbone of the industry if we are here for sure we can grow this country as well and take this country to the way forward so thank you hisham thank you damita and thank you nisal for their time and thanks for everyone participating with us today for phase 1 of um, this session so thanks a lot thanks all for joining us and thank you all of you for your good time today at 7:30 in the evening i know it was a bit of a challenging day today especially after work so thank you all for joining us thank you thanks thanks